Kremlin has refused to answer questions about the fate of one of the country's most senior military commanders. A report suggests that General Sergei Sorokin is uh, being investigated over possible links to the mutiny by the Wagner mercenary group. Uh, he's not been seen since Saturday morning when uh, Wagner's short-lived rebellion started. From Moscow, our Russia editor Steve Rosenberg sent this. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. If you're the president and you faced a mutiny, what you really want are public displays of adoration. We're with you. We all support you, she says, at this Moscow event. Hmm. Vladimir Putin liked that. And look what happened last night. Putin mobbed in Dagestan, in the south of Russia. Very un-Putin like this, getting up close and personal with people. Good timing, though. A few days ago, it was the Wagner mercenaries being cheered, including their leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, as they ended their rebellion. State TV went into overdrive about Putin. Even rock stars don't get this treatment, she says. This is a turbocharged Putin we're seeing suddenly. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere, trying to show he's super popular and in control. To work out who he can trust. Can he trust this senior commander? General Suravikin was head of Russia's invasion force in Ukraine. He's thought to have been close to Mr. Prigozhin. He hasn't been seen in public since Saturday, fueling speculation he may be under suspicion. For many here, the mutiny has added to the atmosphere of uncertainty as Russia's war in Ukraine grinds on. In reality, few Russians are cheering about what's happening to Russia. But some still have hope. When this story would finish on this or other way, then would be a new beginning. And it's necessary to be prepared. But will a new beginning be better or possibly worse? First, it would be worse. And then, if we survive, it would be a window of opportunity. And it would be necessary to use it. As for Russia's immediate future, after the mutiny, that's unclear. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Well, Dr. Marina Miron is a uh, Russian expert at King's College London, and I asked her about Vladimir Putin's future now. Well, I think for Putin it was a very important moment, uh, the so-called mutiny uh, or rebellion, because he had the time to observe how the high-ranking military officers would be acting, how local governors would be acting, and who is essentially going to support Putin and stand on his side and who is going to side with Prigozhin. And when Putin said that he would punish the traitors, I don't think that he was directly re referring to Prigozhin himself. Rather, Prigozhin was used uh, in this context as a bait to see who is loyal and who is not. And it serves the purpose of now um, to initiate this witch hunt for high-ranking military officers, such as uh, General Sergei Surovikin, who allegedly knew about the uh, mutiny, but who failed to inform the FSB thereof. So there will be definitely restructuring in the Ministry of Defense. And Putin has a carte blanche now because he has a very good reason to justify his actions without uh, uh, seeing resistance from okay. uh, Mr. Shoigu. This last week, how do you think it's changed uh, the face of the conflict? Well, I, I think in terms of the conflict, Putin saw what he essentially wanted to see in terms of the allegiance of the armed forces on the ground in Ukraine. They maintained their defensive positions, so it didn't really have the, the short-term impact that one was or that Putin was fearing, perhaps. 
Um, and in the grander scheme of things, um, now there is a question who is going to replace a Wagner group in Ukraine. And uh, some of the state Duma politicians believe that um, the Wagner or the, the, the segment of Wagner will still be fighting in Ukraine. There is hope that they will be signing uh, those contracts with the Ministry of Defense in order to be repurposed because um, the Kremlin recognizes that those are the best fighters that they can hope for to have. And therefore, it will be important to um, be able to use them again for solving specific battlefield tasks, especially when it comes to offensive operations. So Russia has now a window of opportunity because it's on the defensive now to see how this capabilities gap can be filled. What about wider morale in the Russian forces? Is there a reliable way of judging where it stands right now? It must be mixed because um, obviously uh, simple soldiers, they might not be uh, very much in favor of corrupt um, um, top leadership. So for them, this overhaul or the upcoming overhaul might actually boost the morale. On the other hand, there are also those who do not really like Prigozhin and see him as a competition uh, when it comes to his performance in Ukraine and how that has been depicted by the Russian media and how people cheered on, uh, whereas regular troops don't get that kind of treatment. So for them, the, the, the main competitor is essentially gone now. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.